All right, guys, Andy Elliott, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. I got a real treat for you guys here today. I got the man, the myth, the legend. This is my brother, Kelly. He's amazing. He's a great father. He's a great business owner. He's been in sales his entire life. He's recreated his life. Kelly's one of the guys in life that allows me to be hard on him. Give him the cold, hard truth. Tell him what he needs. I remember the first conversation we ever had. I was like, Kelly, this is who you got to become. This is what you got to do. And dude, the guy listened and boom, he's blowing up. I love this guy. He's like a brother to me, but man, he's got a kick-ass story. He's got a really cool opportunity that a lot of people can join if you're looking for a great opportunity, but really a story. You know, I always like to say like, I don't want to tell anybody what to do, but what I want to do is tell you what worked for me. And if it worked for me, why wouldn't it work for you? So today, Kelly, I want us to talk a little bit about kind of what you're currently doing now, but then let's go back to some of the things you did right in your life, some of the things you did wrong, because one of the greatest things that anybody could do in this era that we live in right now is put themselves in someone else's shoes and learn like, what should I do next? Or what shouldn't I do next? You know, like, as I think about my life and my goals, I'm like, who do I want to become and who do I not want to become? Right. And I think you got to think about both those sides. So I know you've been on both sides of the tracks. You're an underdog. And you've come up and you're killing it. So I'm super proud of you, bro. I'm glad you're here. I love you, man. And I love that you're such a great dad to your your kids and you're a savage business leader. I love both of that. Tell us a little bit about you. Number one, how old are you? How many kids do you got? Where do you live? Tell us about your, your organization right now. And then basically tell us what you're doing now. First of all, man, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, you bet. It's a blessing. So I'm 48 years old. I live in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And this is South Dakota, man. There's not but, a lot but, of but South Dakota is a, a gold mine. It is. It is yeah. a gold mine. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people are asleep where you live. And I'm just saying like, they don't have big dreams. So it's easy when you go in, you got this fire, you got this drive. Those people that do that in your community, kill it and crush it. Exactly. I mean, cause there's really no competition. And honestly, like, I like that. I always ask, do you want to be a little fish in a big pond or a big fish in a little pond? Yes. And you could make a lot of money in a little pond being a big fish. I agree. And I love that about you. And that's why you've been so successful because your mentality, which is the same as mine, you have in that place where you live and you just crush it. The cost of living isn't much, is it? No. Listen, it's a great place to live. Yeah. It's great for morals and values. You know, the weather, that's the knock on it. But shit, I mean, it's a great place to raise your kids, man. It is a great place. Great for family. We have everything pretty much there. Yeah, so let's talk about it right now. Tell us what you have. You have an independent, you have a franchise. We have an independent store in Aberdeen, uh-huh. and about 100 miles to the east, we have a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram store okay. in Millbank, South Dakota. Now, you spend most of your time in your independent store, right? Yes. You're obviously a father. You love sales. You love business. You love serving your community, but you also have two kids, right? Yes. I've got two boys. They're 11 and 12 years old, Mm -hmm. Ethan and Cheston. And man, they are stubborn, but they're they're good kids, man. They're getting to the age where they're fighting dad back, but they're strong kids. And I'm I'm proud of them. Yeah. Well, who did they get that from? Yeah. (laughs) No doubt. (laughs) My son, listen to me. I'm like, if you ask one more time, Uh okay, I'm going to beat your ass. My wife's like, who did he get that from? Ask one more time. His dad's a sales trainer. Never stop asking. Exactly. Always keep staying on it. Stay persistent. Stay relentless. You might get 15 no's and the 16th might be a yes. He, she's like, who trained him? I'm like, shit. All right. Keep doing it. But don't do it to your dad. Do it to everyone else in the world. So that's what they're doing. You taught him to be persistent. You taught him to be stubborn. Dude, that's why they're going to make it. For sure. Okay. That hunger. Dude. We're in an era right now where a lot of people honestly don't have that hunger. They don't have that dog. They don't have that drive in them anymore. You know what I'm saying? Your kids are competitive. You know, your kids are out there pushing. I mean, I've seen your kids. Your kids are hungry, man. Your kids are winners. Yeah. And you built them to be that way because their dad's that way. It's all about competition, man. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. I agree with that. Well, so you have one of the biggest stores, right? You got to be a competitive person, but you got one of the biggest stores where you live. Your people do very well. You're looking to add people to your team right now. I think you're looking for people who aren't from your area. You're actually looking for people that are somewhere that are looking to reset, restart, and join this journey with you, right? Like this next phase of your business is going to require a next phase of also people to do this empire build with you. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to my man Kelly right now, number one, he's a great operator. He's a great owner. He's looking for about five more people to add to his company. Everybody's looking for a great organization, a great leader, a level 10 earning opportunity. This is it. You guys know I became a millionaire in the automotive space selling cars. 
I never had a great leader like Kelly. Kelly, he's a great father. You take care of your physical condition. You're always training your mind. But everything that you do is about self-developing your people and helping them hit their dreams in life. And I love that. So guys, down below, you're going to see a link in the description box. It's going to ask a couple questions. You can send over a 60-second video. Kelly himself will personally reach out to you. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to meet Kelly. If you're looking for a great opportunity, if you've been waiting for your shot, here it is. So guys, click the link below and you guys will get connected with Kelly in the next 24 hours. Let's get back to the video. We're looking for underdogs, man. What does that mean to you, an underdog? People that want to do uncomfortable things. Because on the other side of discomfort is growth and success. You can make a ton of money, but I want people who want to win. I like you that. know, I want people who want to be part of a kick-ass team and make a ton of money, but they want to grow, uh -huh. you know? And they want to be a part of the team, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like coming to work and like, that's my job. You hate that. That's why you built the gym. You built the gym in your dealership so that your people can work out so that you could make it where it's not a job. It's a lifestyle. We come here, we take care of the community. We take care of the transportation needs. We can smash a workout. We can sweat. You can, we can suffer. We can grind together. Basically become one big family. Listen, number one, Andy, health is number one. Your fitness, you ain't anything unless you have this. You can't have this unless you're, you're hitting a workout every day. Your physical fitness is your mental fitness. I've never seen anyone have a strong mental fitness that wasn't in shape. And they may be able to make it for a while, but I don't count on luck. So I'm not trying to get lucky for a year and be able to make it. What happens when things get really hard? When your mind's got to be sharp. Exactly. When you wake up in the morning, you hit a workout. How well do you talk that day? How well do you speak? How well do you do the things that you do that day at a really high level? Exactly. But when you don't take care of yourself, you wake up, you're a little sluggish, you're a little slow. You know, it's like you can't think as quick. Instead of playing chess and being 10 steps ahead, you're playing checkers and you're reactive. Yes. And you get sure. triggered easily. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Dude, there ain't nothing like getting up, hitting that workout. It's a reset button. You're ready to go and attack the day. I, yeah. Like, I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about what kind of people you're looking for. You said underdogs. I think a good phrase to put is like, you love overcomers, right? Yeah. That's a good way to put it. But I'm, I'm looking for people who want to answer that voice in their head. You know, that voice, when you don't do the things you're supposed to do, it's that voice that's just like, Hey, when are you going to do this? And they're ready to answer it, but they're ready to run through that wall. Two things for me. It's eliminate and elevate. I'm looking for people who want to eliminate all excuses, man. All entitlement. Quit blaming everybody. Quit pointing fingers. Quit thinking everybody owes them everything. The government don't freaking owe you anything. Your boss don't owe you anything. You know, your parents don't owe you anything. You go look in the mirror and you own everything. Everything's on you. Everything bad happened to you, it's on you eliminate all that entitlement and then we can get somewhere and then we can elevate our personal responsibility and start taking massive action. And from that minute on, everything's different. When you have a decision to make, it's one of two things. It's either, Hey, is this going to help me be the best version of me or it isn't? It's an easy decision. And those are the type of people that I'm looking for. You mentioned it a little bit earlier about self-limiting beliefs. I'm to a point where I'm not settling for nothing anymore, you know? I love that. And I'm just not gonna. Life's too short. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. I want to be the best version of me, and I want people who want to run that life with me. I eat, sleep, and breathe this shit. Yeah. Yeah. When and that's, you, that's why we get along yeah, so well. Yeah, when you tell me, I'm like, dude, it's like, it's like listening to my favorite song. Yeah. Dude, there's nothing that's better than me listening to someone else tell me how I feel. This is why his company is doing so well. And this is why you could have the opportunity to be a part of something like this. When you're around people that think this way, that believe this way, your life becomes like this. Look, I don't do anything else but try to work on myself and be better. Conor McGregor talked about fighting and did fighting 24 hours a day. And that's why he became successful. He didn't think about five different things, just one. And my one that I think about is, is how can I be better today than I was yesterday? How can I think smarter? How can I help my family better? How can I change my bloodline? How can I prove everybody wrong? How can I make me proud of me? How can I make sure I'm my kid's hero? How do I know that 
what I think is possible, there's not so much more. You know, the chokehold on every company is leadership. That's the chokehold of growth is the leader. Because when the leader believes that they've maxed out the potential where they are, the potential's maxed out. It's, it's all here. This next chapter, you've taken yourself to where you need to go. You know there's more meat on the bone on you. But now you're ready to coach and lead a team and get to that next level with the team. A bigger team. A better team. A team that's more like us. Does that make sense? Like, as I say, like, like us is like, like us, like the things, if you listen to Kelly and you're like, man, I like that. That's the way this man talks every day. Imagine being around people that talk that way every day. What would your life look like in a hundred days from now? In a year from now? Thousand days. Yeah. The book Mental Toughness by Andy Frazella. When you open the book, it says, you want me to show you a magic trick. And I'm sure you saw that. And it says, you know, your last thousand days, show me your routine. I can tell you your body fat percentage. I can tell you your bank account. I can show you your relationships. I can tell you how much you like yourself. I can tell you everything just by seeing your routine from the last thousand days. And when you're around people like you, Kelly, your routine falls into line because you're around people that care more than everyone else. And you're around people that literally want to help and want to give and want to do more for other people. So if you guys are watching this and you're like, man, you know what? I want to I want to roll with this guy. I've been waiting for my opportunity to find the right person to go to the next level. I'm looking for somebody who's going to believe in me, who won't give up on me, who will push me hard and someone that I can also be a part of the big picture, you know, and help you grow. Cause I mean, you you have no limits. So you'll buy 10 more stores right now. If you get the right people, you'll do whatever. It's all, it's all human capital. It's all people. And your goal is to recreate yourself, but also recreate as many other people as you can along the way and build something special. So if that's you, make sure you guys click the link in the description box. Make sure you guys fill that out and Kelly will reach out to you guys in the next 24 hours. That's super important. Why don't we go to the first time me and you had a conversation on the phone? Let's go through that first year. What did that look like? You know, what were some of the things that I told you? What were some of the things that you were doing? You know, you needed to stop to get to the next level. You know, maybe people you had to get rid of, things you had to change. Because you're sitting here right now, and I'm like, damn, I like this guy. But you weren't always this guy. That gives me hope to believe that no matter where I am, I can change also. Well, that's a great point. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. Because one thing that everyone needs to know, and that really helped me, is it's never too late. It's never too late. Listen, I grew up in the Midwest, Western South Dakota. There were 1,300 people. And my mom and dad were really, really hard workers. But they didn't know it was possible. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They showed up early. They left late. They were loyal. They had the same job. They made average money. But they didn't know it was possible. So that's what I picked up from them. The ability to work hard Mm -hmm. and stay with something and be loyal. But when you and I first got together, I'll never forget this like it was yesterday. And you may not even remember this. I knew that as a leader, I needed to brand myself. And the way to do that is on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Look what you've done. But I had a problem pushing that live button for about eight, nine months. And you and I were pretty close. This is when we first met. We had talked three, four times on the phone. And I called you and I'm like, Andy, hey. And I remember where I was. I was in the West Service Bay in my shop because I didn't want my people to hear me. And I said, hey, I know I need to start doing this social media thing. I need to go Facebook Live, but I just struggle with it. There were about two seconds of silence. And you said, Kelly, grab your ball sack and hit the button. And right away, obviously, ego filled my body. You know, this guy's going to talk to me this way. And you're like, just hit the button. You're going to suck right away. That's how it's supposed to be. And we talked for a few minutes and you could, I wish you could pull it up, but my first live is right in that West Bay. Right after we got off the phone, I pushed live. Mm -hmm. And you know how I felt after that? Exhilarating. Yeah. You know, on the other side of discomfort is growth. Is euphoric. Something simple like that. Just that was powerful. I want to build a badass team. That's what it's all about for me right now. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Meeting people and people who may not believe in themselves, helping them make that jump. You know the jump I'm talking about, where they start to bet on themselves. Uh That's where the power is. Yeah. Makes you dangerous. What were some of the routines, the disciplines that helped you become who you are now as a successful business leader? Like, what are some vices you had to give up on? Drinking was definitely one. Self-sabotaging myself. So you gave that crap up, right? You killed the negative bullshit. You were a traitor your own self. 
toxic people Mm -hmm. when you know they're toxic and you still let them be around you and then you complain of the results. So you had a clean house, quit self-sabotaging yourself. You eliminated drinking or at least did it to a minimum. Yeah, to a minimum. I will still have a drink once in a while, but it's very few. It's usually something clean like vodka and soda water. Yeah, but you keep your edge. You stay. I do. I might have a drink or two. I just don't drink much. You can ask any of my guys. Well, because you work out so hard, you don't want to lose that game. Yeah. (laughs) And here's the deal, man. I work too hard and I feel too damn good. When I have one drink, I can tell the difference in the morning at 4.30 when I wake up. Oh, hell yeah, you can. I may not have a headache. I may not be hungover, but I can tell a difference. Yeah. And then the nutrition part of what was probably most of it. Starting to put clean food in your body, mm, you know, that's you. Getting, rid, getting rid of the chemicals and the toxic stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just the shit food, the processed food. Yeah. And it's all over. They'll advertise it as healthy and it's not. So you really got to learn how to read ingredients and, and look at that end of it as well. Cause that's very important. Probably one of the most important things. You think you don't feel good up here? Those chemicals and those toxins have something to do with that too. I love it. Let's go back to when your parents, they're hard workers, they're average, right? And you're like, dude, I want to break through. What'd you do? Did you get in sales? Give us your journey of success. Yeah. How you got to be an, an owner of two companies now. Let me go back there. When I say that they didn't know it was possible, like where I lived, someone making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, they had it all. You know, we didn't know it was possible. Mm. No so way. It was all perspective. Yeah, it was. It was all perspective. But I was living in Bismarck, North Dakota. And... For some reason, I ended up in Atlanta, Georgia. My sister's an attorney out there. And I was going to probably get back into school down there. And I got a job selling cars at the local Ford dealership. I would have been 21 years old. Cool. 21 years old. Got a job selling cars. Ford dealership. I start there in my second month. I make like $7,800. And to me. over. Yeah. It was a game changer. Yeah. And I could do things. Some of you right now, like I know people throw around the world millions all the time and all this shit. Look, real life is. 95% 95% of the world's broke, okay? At 21 years old, when you make $8,000 for the first time, shit gets real, real fast, right? Real fast. You can understand that I don't have to be who I used to be anymore. You can change your life, the way you live, the way that you operate. You know the phrase, well, you can make whatever you want to make, depending on how hard you work. My manager liked me. My mentor back then, mm-hmm. he liked me mm-hmm. and he had a lot of vices, but he was a great communicator. Yeah. And he said, Hey, you can make whatever you want in this business. And I believed him and it was fun. I had fun. Yeah. Anybody that does something that don't have fun. I mean, you can be miserable, but dude, you're not going to make it. You're going to burn out. You got to keep your purpose. So your purpose was to change your life. You wanted to start making money. You wanted to get this taste of this new you. So you obviously you go hard in the paint. You're working your ass off. You start training, learning the communication skills, which are extremely important. Words are godlike. Okay. The better the speaker you are, the more money you make. What does that journey look like over the next 20 years? So I was selling cars and within six months I got moved into finance. Mm -hmm. So I was a finance manager. I did really well in finance. I did that for about a year and a half. Okay. And I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Now I'm from South Dakota. So I'm starting to miss my family. I had fun in Atlanta. So I moved back to South Dakota, Mm -hmm. and I get a job as a finance manager at the local Ford store in Aberdeen, where I'm at right now. And I was there for 17 years. At that store? Yeah. I was the finance manager, and I got moved up, and I was the GSM. And my boss was a partner in the dealership. Great guy. Great mentor. We got along great. He taught me a lot about communication, just handling tough conversations right away. If he walks through the door, you handle it right now. We don't run from that shit. Very calm guy. I love that. Love him to death. Okay. So I, I had been working there for about 16 years at this point. We were doing, we were doing very well. And the main owners or the majority owners was his brother and sister-in-law. So they want us to go to a meeting with some psychologist to show us what our strengths are. And they end up getting in a fight as a family. And at that point right there, I knew, I knew they're family. So I'm just a number to them. And I had an opportunity to start my own store and Mm -hmm. build from the ground up. And I took it. I love it. And I haven't looked back. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't because I was making good money. You're at a place for 17 years. You obviously have safety. 
you have reliability, you feel like you know you're going to be taken care of, you know basically what your life looks like. Am I right? That's right. A lot of people are sitting there right now, and you know what your life looks like now. I call it the unlived life, and it scares the piss out of me. The life that if you continue to go on, you'll never learn about. And imagine dying, and God's like, dang, I really wanted you to have this unlived life that you never got. It was supposed to be this. And then he shows you, and you're like, dude, like that? And he's like, yeah, you just couldn't do it. You didn't believe in yourself enough. You got to remember the prince of the world isn't God. It's the devil. God rules everything, but devil rules this earth. The devil came to kill, still destroy. In any dream you have, all they want to do, he just wants to torch it. Okay. So when you think about that, that next step, I want you to remember what I just said, the unlived life. What if I don't do this, Right. What's the cost? People always think about the cost of like, if I leave here, you know, what could that cost me? Risk inversion means we're going to give the risk up front. When I bought this building, it was $8 million. When I spend $8 million, I didn't make that $8 million back day one. It took me time to make it back. But I spent the money up front and then I made it back. When you start a business, you're going to get your dick kicked in. You're going to get your balls kicked in. You're going to get crushed. and then. You're going to get even back to where you were at your old job, and then you're going to build it back up. But if you're not prepared to go on that journey of the unknown, stay working for someone else. I honestly would tell you, I don't think everybody needs to start their own business. I think maybe if there were 100 people here, I think maybe seven should try to journey their own business, and 93 should stay working as an intrapreneur, not an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. an intrapreneur. An intrapreneur can have a very good life. Yeah. An intrapreneur's job is to blow up the business for the entrepreneur. An intrapreneur doesn't get sued. An intrapreneur doesn't take on risk. An intrapreneur doesn't have to spend the advertising money. An intrapreneur doesn't pay payroll taxes. An intrapreneur doesn't do any of these things. But an intrapreneur can get paid a good percentage, do a good job, have a healthy life, and not have the stress. Because as a business owner, People think that, oh man, owning your own company is great. Look, dude, there's no Christmas. There's no Easter. There's freaking 2 a.m. nights almost all the time, sitting up doing payroll, trying to figure out why this and this don't add up to equal that. (laughs) Trying to figure it out. If you don't want to go through that, as sexy as as cool as entrepreneurship sounds, dude, it's dangerous. And that's why I like when I see an owner like you that has this opportunity for people to come plug into and become great and help blow up the empire with you. A guy like you takes good care of people. And the more value that these people believe they're capable of getting, the more value they can bring you, the more that they're worth, right? Somebody's always like, I want to make more money. I always say, increase your value. You can't just ask me for more money. You have to increase your value. Money made, money paid. Show me how you can create a bucket in my company to create more money than it was currently making. I will be happy to pay you a percentage of it. No problem. Yeah, with no problem. Look, if you can show me where a hundred grand is in my company right now that I don't know how to get, I'll be happy to give you 10% of it. I get 90 now. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast as you're listening to my man Kelly right now. Number one, he's a great operator. He's a great owner. He's looking for about five more people to add to his company. Everybody's looking for a great organization, a great leader, a level 10 earning opportunity. This is it. You guys know I became a millionaire in the automotive space selling cars. I never had a great leader like Kelly. Kelly, he's a great father. You take care of your physical condition. You're always training your mind. But everything that you do is about self-developing your people and helping them hit their dreams in life. And I love that. So guys, down below, you're going to see a link in the description box. It's going to ask a couple questions. You can send over a 60-second video. Kelly himself will personally reach out to you. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to meet Kelly. If you're looking for a great opportunity, if you've been waiting for your shot, here it is. So guys, click the link below and you guys will get connected with Kelly in the next 24 hours. Let's get back to the video. That's great. But most people want to go, I I need more money. Shut your mouth. That ain't how it works. Okay. You need to know, create more value. You get more money. So you take this leap. It's scary as hell. You literally have to buy cars now, get a floor plan, create a building. Expenses go through the roof. Salary goes away. All known factors disappear. When we opened the doors, we had zero customers. 
we had a DMS with zero customers in it. Think about that. Yeah, you have so no clientele. Scratch and claw. You have no clientele. And it's it's rough, but I wouldn't have changed it. I learned so much in that time. Yeah. Just to touch on what you were talking about there. If you can show value, like you said, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. That's leverage. I'm happy to talk about a leverage situation if you can show me value. I love people that want to take care of me. You're close to Ian and Evan Macklin, the twins in our company. They've flown out to your dealership many times. They've spent, you know, the last few years with you. Those guys watch my back. They're guard dogs. They don't get paid to be a guard dog. They get paid to, to coach. They get paid to produce income. They get paid to change people's lives. But they're also guard dogs. They watch my family, watch my back, watch our company, watch everyone. And they don't get paid to do it. Since they do more than they're paid to do, they end up with more. Mm -hmm. And the way that I see them, the way that I view them, the way that I take care of their families, the way that I would do anything for them, kill for them, do anything, is because of the love that they've shown me. And so I want to tell you, if you ever want like somebody to take you to the next level, you have to take them to the next level. You have to take so care true. of them. You can't ask people. That's what we talk about contributors and consumers. Those guys are contributors, man. They just contribute so much and they don't consume. They never ask what's in it for me. And what's powerful with people like that, I've got a few of those too, mm-hmm. is they took that jump that we were talking about and risked it for you. They bet on themselves, but they're also betting on you. At the same time. Yeah. It's powerful, man. I just get giddy thinking about that stuff. Yeah, because it's called the rich life. Like a lot of people, they make money. The art of achievement and the art of fulfillment are two different things. And I know a lot of people that can make a little bit of money, but they're never happy. They might be, even if they get rich in their wallet, they're never rich in their heart. When you build like this, you're rich. And that's why your empire is going to matter. You know, this podcast was to share my good buddy Kelly with all of you guys so you can understand, you know, how he came up, some of the lessons that he's learned, how he operates. I always say the world's my library. If I know what I'm looking for, it'll give me what I'm looking for. And if you're looking for self-development, if you're looking to change, if you're looking for vices, strongholds, things that you need to stay away from, if you're looking for the right routines you need to be doing, I mean, we've talked about a lot of them in this podcast. And you'll learn that the information never really changes. It's like the Bible. The Bible doesn't change. It's not like, when's a new Bible going to come out? Like, dude, it was done a thousand years ago. It's what it meant back then, what it means to me, what it means today. And when we talk about this routine, your discipline, motivation's fleeting. Like you can have it. It's cool. It feels nice. But next week when you wake up and life hits you in the mouth, that motivation ain't going to be there, but your discipline will push you through. And having a free mindset, people may say, well, I don't want to be in shape. Okay, cool. Well, when life hits you in the mouth and your mind goes to crap and all of a sudden it tries to take control of you and you have these bad thoughts, by the way, thoughts will control your life and they can be lies. They're not even real. You may see your general manager. Maybe you see him working on something and you may walk by and you're like, oh, he's not working again. Well, he might be working on work, but you just think he's not working. Yeah, so because you think he's not working, now all of a sudden you get mad. Now all of a sudden you tell yourself that story again and again and again and again, and it's just overlaying. And now you create resentment against him. You're like, man, you're starting to piss me off. Dude, the guy didn't even do nothing. You're creating fake stories in your head. This is why mental fitness is so important. And by the way, people say, I want to be financially free. How about mentally free? I got free here and I'm going to the moon. Nothing controls me anymore. And I was my worst enemy. I was. And you know what? The cost of inaction, this is important, is way bigger than the cost of action. The cost of inaction. I asked a salesman the other day, I said, how much money are you making? He said, I'm making 200 grand. I said, cool, sounds like a lot. Sounds like you're doing good. But do you know in your industry, the top guys make a million? So as cool as 200 sounds, five times more than you're making now is a lot of money. Imagine that. That would be you making 200000 for five years. Imagine if you could make a million in one year. You saved yourself five years. Wouldn't that be cool? He's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. I got this coaching deal that shows you how to compress time frames, how to take what would take you in five years to do it in a year. It's $10,000. It could be $100,000. 
It's costing him $800,000 a year that he's giving away to not know what the people that are making a million know. But he won't give up 10 grand. He won't give up 50 grand. The cost of the inaction is the greatest cost. We're living in an era right now that's very exciting to be alive. Because people that have done things that we want to do, they'll actually tell us how they did it. Now, if you're an action taker and you execute, you're going to spend the money because you need to know that shit. If you don't execute and you're one of these idea people, because we got all these people right now with all these ideas. They're like, oh, dude, I got this new idea. We got so many visionaries in this world, but not enough integrators. People don't execute. I'm an integrator, which means I think of 20 ideas every week, new ideas. I figure out which ones will work. And then the ones that work, I integrate. And I flush everything else out and I delete the information. That's how I stay on track. I'm an integrator. I'm an executor. That's one of the things that I would tell you to be your greatest strength. I see you execute. Anytime I've told you to do something, you do it. And I think that as we're giving a message to anybody, like that's the secret. Ideas are junk without execution. Basically, ideas without execution is hallucination. That is powerful. It's like hallucination. Yeah. It's like you're just hallucinating. Well, people in general, they have an idea, they get excited. You have about 12 to 24 hours to take action on that. If you don't take action on that, it's gone. Yeah. You take action, you're going to have a result. You may not like the result even. It may be a failure in your head. But now you can think again. You can do a little research, get better, and then right away you're going to be excited again. Mm -hmm. Now you take action again. It's just it's just a cycle. And you get yeah. better every time. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So if anybody's taking notes, which I always say this, winners take notes. They always do because they want to get all the information. I have a, I have a fear of missing out. If I someone's talking, I'm like, what, what, what did they say? And I want to write it down. The way human beings work is that once we hear something, if we don't write it down, it goes into our head. And then if we don't write it down, our brain deletes it. We want to remember it, but we can't because you have 60 to 70,000 thoughts going through your head a day. Bro, that's a lot. And by the way, the negative ones overpower the, the positive ones. Think about something right now. Think about if you think someone might be stealing from you. Think about the way that your stomach would start to turn and you start to get pissed off. You start to get angry. You start to think about what am I going to do? You start to think, how could this person do this? Shit? All the good shit in your life, all the good shit, your kids being healthy, your blessed company, the people that are loyal to you, all the good stuff washes all that out with that negative sick turmoil. And that's why you got to say, hey, man, I got to find some good in this. First of all, people are humans. They do do shit. And if I find out that's the truth, they're gone. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. What I'm actually going to do is show my people who don't steal from me, who are loyal to me, who love me, who have taken care of me. I'm going to go show them twice as much love. Fuck that. That's the decision making power that everybody has. And by the way, if you're watching this, The ability to grow, honestly, is to learn how other people process information and how they think. I'm always learning how people think and I want to hijack how they think, especially if they're people I look up to and that are able to get somewhere that I haven't been able to get on an array of topics. You know, if they can get somewhere that I can't get, they think differently than me. There's somewhere where I'm going right and they're going left. And I just need to study them long enough and I'll pay whatever to get close enough to them. I've paid at one time up to $250,000 out of my pocket just to get next to somebody for a day, just so I can study. You got to invest in yourself. You do. Like I've invested in my company and my mm-hmm. people and just training. You've been Obviously, doing this for years. Yeah. With your platform yeah. and just skill acquisition. You got to have a little skin in the game. Well, the only way that you can change your life, if somebody's sitting here and they're like, I want to have a different life next year than I have this year. There's only three ways. New information. I need to learn the new information. New people. I got to be around someone else. Someone else has to take me on the journey. And new experiences. You got to get out from where you're at and you got to experience something else. If I wanted to see what it was like to live this guy's life, if I could go hang out with him for a day and I got to experience how he lived, or maybe eat dinner in his home, I wouldn't want to go back to my home. But now if I saw his home on TV, I might be like, oh, you know, it's a nice house. Yeah, but you know, I'm doing okay. But once I eat dinner in his house, I'd be like, shit, I want that house. That's the house that I want. Now, because I've had that experience. Oh, yeah. 
Now I want it. Power of proximity. It's like driving an old car and then having a new one. It's like when we come here, man, getting my salespeople to come here, they get around you guys and the energy and the enthusiasm. It's just everybody's running at a hot 110. And you're running hot too. Like it's powerful and people don't think of that. They don't know how important that is to get around the right people with the right energy. I want you to think about this. What drives you more? For me to tell you what you can gain? Or to tell you who you're letting down if you don't wake up. You know the answer to that. Yeah. Some people right now, I talk about the big house and they're like, eh, you know, I don't need all that. You don't know that you can have that. You don't believe that that's the life you should have. You should raise your standards and create a big life so you can show other people what's possible. But your kids, my wife, I know that you're not married, but my wife, I'm not letting her down. My children, I'm not letting them down. I know this, my whole family, just like yours, have always been small thinkers. They've been hard workers and they've maxed out what they believe is possible. I broke the fucking bloodline, dude. Understand, I rewrote my DNA. I said, we're not fat anymore. We're in shape. We don't talk negative. We talk positive. We don't hang out with losers. We're winners. We're not lazy. We're hard workers. We don't have small lives. We have big lives. We don't dream. We freaking attack viciously and we achieve. I'm rewriting my DNA. I'm rewriting my bloodline. And a hundred years from now, your kids are going to have kids and they're going to think about you and they're going to thank you. And every time that they think, I don't know if I can do this. They're going to say, dude, grandpa Kelly did it. That one thing will ride with them their entire life because your blood is their blood. I wish I could say that for my family. I like to tell the side of, hey, you know, I tried it their way. Fuck that. I'm not doing it. Kelly, hard work is important. But let's just be honest for a minute. If you don't learn, if you don't self-invest, if you don't work harder on yourself than you do on your job, Your parents never worked hard on themselves. They just worked hard on their job. So they couldn't develop their income to be 5X bigger because they didn't develop themselves 5X more. They couldn't work five times harder because you said they woke up early and stayed late. So how many people do you know in life that are working hard? They're, They're waking up early. They're staying late, but they're never making any more money. They never become more fulfilled. They never achieve a bigger life. So the fact is you have to work hard, but hard work's not enough. You have to develop. And right now, since we're in a time where you can learn what all these people know, you can literally get on YouTube. You can type in anything, how to be a great speaker. Yeah, A thousand videos will come your way. Question is, are you willing to sit down, write down all the great things that they say, how to become a great speaker? Study those videos for a hundred days. A hundred days from now, your language is unrecognizable. You're a different person. Mm. Isn't that crazy? It is, man. What a cool time to be alive. This is what scares the hell out of me is I don't want to wake up when I'm 60, 70, however old and be like, God, what if I I could have been done and had so much more? I could have helped more people living with regret, having that regret. Not an option. Number one, you're expiring. Okay. So you have a limited amount of time left. Time isn't your most valuable thing. You may say it is. Everybody says time's your most valuable thing. No, What you focus on and what you give attention to is your most valuable thing because you can have a lot of time and not focus on anything and that time doesn't mean shit. So what you focus on and what you give your attention to is more valuable than time. I could do more in less time than you could do in more time with better focus and more attention on the right shit. Distractions are real. Okay. All right. What are we doing? That's a distraction. And what are we doing that's taking you in the right place? Like what's pulling you away from what you want? What's taking you to where you want to go? And then the other side is, what are the controllables? Kelly, there's things you can't control. You can't control the market. You can't control the economy. But you can control the way you behave. You can control your intensity levels. You can control being where your feet are. If you're at work, be at work. And then when you go home, be at home. And then when you go to the gym, be at the gym. You can be where your feet are and each one of those areas will be more. We can also say, what can you control? The way you feel about something. If you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. 
if you treat your job that you have now, your company, like it was the first day you open doors, you would go back to being scared shitless that you were going to go out of business. That edge in today would make you the most dangerous man in your state. You got to go back to that. Your kids, remember the first day they were born? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you love them, but go back to the first day they were born. The first day that you were taking them home, you said, God, thank you. I promise you that needs to be there today. Remember the first day your manager, your general manager goes, you know, Hey, thank you for this promotion. You remind him every day. Hey, remember the day that I gave you this promotion? I gave you this opportunity. It was a privilege to be a leader. And you told me you were going to do all these things with my company and my store. Remember when you told me that? I don't ever want you to forget that. And I want you to live in that promise and that commitment for the rest of your life. Don't you ever let normality come into this position. Marriages. If you treat something like it's a beginning, there'll never be an end. If I see two people and they're going to marriage counseling, I'm like, dude, you guys can stop paying that lady. Just treat each other like you did when you first met. If you do that, you guys will have no problems. Powerful. Yeah. So these are controllables. These are things that we can control. How I'm literally growing at neck breaking pace in our company is that I do this, my wife does this, and our team does this, and we live by what we can control and what we can't control. Fuck it. If we can't control it, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to lose sleep over shit I can't control. It doesn't matter. We're always worried about shit we can't control. And by the way, that shit you can't control that you worry about, you know what it does? Makes you sick and paralyzes you from being your best self. That's that self-sabotage we were talking about earlier. So it, it, fallen. Yeah, and it's good to be around people that remind you of how this shit can sneak in. Kelly is looking to hire an army. He needs five people, men or women, who are ready to go to the next level of their life, who are ready to give up all their old shit and restart, recreate, and go to their best life with him, him with you, your family's husband, wife, kids, doesn't matter. You know, Kelly's a parent. You know, Kelly's a business owner. You know, Kelly loves taking care of himself. Kelly is a well-rounded person that knows what it takes to, to look in the mirror and be proud of yourself. You're 48 years old. You're in great shape. You take care of yourself. It feels good. You're looking for this edge. This next level is going to be your empire build, which is going to be about five more people to your army. These people are people that say, hey, why not me? Exactly. Right? Like, why not? Exactly. Like, I have a company of 100 people. I have 100 people on my payroll. My number three man in my company died of a drug overdose four years ago. He was addicted to drugs for 15 years. And now he's a lot of muscle in great shape, rebuilt Killer. his whole mind. Yeah, his name's Tommy. And when you see him, you'll be like, there's no way that was you. He was so addicted to the bad stuff that those addictive personalities, now that I've taught him to be addicted to the good stuff, now he's killing it. And the cool thing is, is that people go, well, how can a drug addict work for Andy? You know, like what kind of company do they run? What you've overcame makes you immensely qualified to help other people overcome that. If you can overcome it, you can help anyone else overcome it. All the shit you've been through, This is why our coaching company is so dangerous because everyone that's out there, all the things that they're going through, I did all of it and I beat it all and said, if I can beat it all, a freaking, you know, piece of shit like me growing up, they can do it too and not be a piece of shit anymore. And that's the beautiful thing. I think that's the biblical part is that the old is gone and the new has come. And that people that were Saul can now be the Apostle Paul. They can take the Bible the furthest, who were the Christian killers. Got to betray someone to know what it feels like to betray someone so that you never want to betray anybody again. You've got to get betrayed to understand what it feels like to be betrayed. If you only had good relationships your whole life, you would never take care of them because you never have a bad one. But once you get a bad one and you get burned and you have a shitty ass relationship or you love someone and they cheat on you, you know what? You're like, dude. I'm going to make sure when I find the right person, I'm taking really good care of them because now I value a good relationship. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And so once you do all these things wrong, once you understand how to do them right, you're like, this is amazing. That's what you're doing, man. You're doing things right now. And you've always been a hard worker. Now you're in this self-development space. You're growing like hell. You're a coach to your people. You're continuing to coach yourself. You have no entitlement. You have no ego. You have no pride. Yeah, you're a competitor. Yeah, you're a winner. You want first place. 
I know what you want. Second place isn't for us. But at the end of the day, you also want to do life with people that want to go through this hardship with you, that don't want to just show up, get a check and have life be easy. Do you want to build a team? Your greatest team will be the people that when shit gets hard, they get closer together. And those are the times they grow more. Our relationship when things get hard will grow better than it will grow when things are just easy and good. It'll take some pain for me and you to get close, some suffering for me and you to get close. A mother and a child, she has a kid for nine months. And that's why she loves her kid more than anybody in this world, because she had to go through hell and have delivery in a pregnancy. That's why she would die for her kid. It's a love that her husband can't give her. It's because of that pain, that discomfort for a long period of time, you know? Heck yeah. Yeah. Super cool shit, man. So Kelly, I'm gonna let you finish it out. One piece of information, one thing that you want to deliver that you can look back and say over the last five years, one of the things that has given you an edge to become a better person, to be a better father to be a better leader, to be better. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that. Really, for me, it comes back to this. Don't settle for less than you're capable of. Every minute of every day when you have a decision to make, make sure it's either helping you get where you want to get to be the best version of you. If it's not, it's an easy decision. And remember this, tomorrow ain't always promised. There's people who are with us right now who won't be with us tomorrow. That's a fact. It's powerful. I tell my team that every day. But if you're looking to get uncomfortable and you want to run with a badass team and grow, and I mean grow, we'd love to have you. That's it, guys. You met my boy, Kelly. He's a savage, super loving guy. Talked about this already, but you're so good to your kids. You love your kids. You never sacrifice to be away from your kids. Like Getting you out here was like pulling your damn teeth out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're so stubborn. You want to know why your kids are so stubborn? Hey, you want to know why they're so stubborn? Because your ass is so stubborn. He's one of the most stubborn people I've ever met in my life. And now your kids are paying you back. I'm going to tell them good job. That's so true. Yeah, because you're stubborn as hell. I keep telling him, like, Kelly, you got to come out, bro. And you're like, oh, I I will. That's just like your kids. It's good to be here. But you see, though, that stubbornness? I know. That's where your kids get it. Yeah, for sure. Guys, we love you. Have a blessed day. We hope during just one 30-second slot during this entire podcast, you grab something that can help change your life. That's why we do this. That's why we make these. That's why we create this. I wish when I was younger, I wish I could just watch how people lived and they could talk about the mistakes they made. But, you know, we had to pick up a book and read 400 pages to find 10 pages that had something to do with my industry. And now you can watch something, you can listen to it in the car, and you can just think, bam, you know what? I need to be reminded of that. That's great. And now you tighten that up. Or maybe you're like, damn, man, I need to start doing that. And it's something new you add to your life. So guys, we love you. Have a blessed day. Make sure if you've made it to the end of this, you're the top one percenter. Click the link below. If you're looking for an opportunity, Kelly is the real deal. He's amazing. Andy Elliott certified. I train his company. He's always close to us. You guys will spend a lot of time with me. So I love you guys. Have a blessed day. And again, Kelly, we appreciate you, bro. Thank you, brother. Okay. See you guys in the next podcast. Let's get it.